What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another super exciting Fix My List. All right, yeah, this is the show where we fix three lists submitted by our War Room members. And if you would like to get your list fixed up by us here at Art of War, bring it in. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to want to go into the link down below, the warm.vhx.tv, where there's a three-day free trial. Hop in, check out some of our exciting educational content, how to get better at 40K, and submit your list in for Fix My List. Yeah, I'm super excited. We got three banger chaos lists for you today, and you know that's why I'm here. Everyone loves the chaos. That's, Everyone loves the chaos train, Jack. That's right. That's right. If we've got if we got Xenos, oftentimes it's Richard. He's got he's the Xenos boy. Kind of alien in his uh, in his aspect. But no, we've got we got keepers of secrets, we got fiends finding you, we got some awesome stuff coming for you today. So don't go in, we've got three different lists and it's gonna be epic. All right. Well let's kick it off with the first one. Let's kick it, Jack. We've got Chaos Demons from Brother Tobias. Pew, 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 pew. All right, Chaos Demons, why don't you read off what we have and I will look at um, the notes if Brother Tobias has posted any. That's right, so Brother Tobias is actually one of our Discord members. That's how you get your list submitted if you are one of our War members, which we have a three-day free trial going on for right now in our description below. You can submit your list. The Jack Gods will come down and select your list and then every week we fix them. Definitely, definitely, uh, you know, it helps, helps to get the eye of Jack if there's some, like, compliments in there, you know what I'm just saying? Exactly. It can't hurt, right? Like, it can't hurt. So, we've got Shalaxi Hellbane, Keeper of Secrets with the Shining Aegis, Seleski, the Mask of Slanesh for four characters, 30 Demonettes, 10, 10, 10, and then 6 by, 3 by 6 means 666. Six, six. All right, and Brother Tobias just titled the list, I'm Trying to Relive the Slanesh Glory Days. All right, so Mono Slanesh is our theme here. Obviously, that's not one of the strongest gods, but there you can do you can do good things with Slanesh. I think it's legitimately underexplored. What parts of the list do you think are underexplored? So I think Secret Chariots are awesome at 65 points, and I actually think, in general, the Chariot profile is is like pretty good for a defense and speed for, for cost now. It's gone down quite a few times this edition. What's it, like 65 65 now? now. It moves 14, it's 7 wounds, it's got a 4-up interval, it's got an Assault Pistol Gun, so you can advance and combat and action at all times. It's not a vehicle, right? So it doesn't give anything up? It doesn't give anything up. It's a Chariot, whatever that is. It's OC3... It's OC3, so like, screw your rhinos, I'm holding that objective. And it, it moved, like, it's good. It's genuinely good. 65. Like, 65 for that profile is just like the perfect secondary scorer yeah. without you really caring, right? Like, that's what a squad of scouts costs. It's also not going to die to like inconsequential storm bolters and things like that. Your opponent has to put effort in, and that effort still might not work. I played a game where Quentin outflanked three eradicators, shot the chariot, I spiked fours. I'm still here. Okay, so that part of it seems pretty good from a scoring perspective. Yeah. Uh, it also ties things up pretty well, because it's, it's, what's toughness? Toughness six. Toughness six, with seven wounds and a four-up invul, mm -hmm. means that there's plenty of things you can charge and tie up. One of the, the, one of the challenges that the Slanish Demons faces is that they're very fragile, pretty much across the board. Unless you take the Keepers of Secrets, um, they're quite chonky somehow. Um, you're very fast, but you do not shoot like at all. So we have to really manipulate trading and combat and using movement to get into combat with the people. And one thing I like to do with that is like go put something on the objective, force your opponent to come back and do something about it, and then that kind of kind of gets you some interaction going. Right. It lets you not just put your big models out into the center for your opponent to just gun and shoot at, yeah. right? You're, you're not going to win with Mono Slash by like running keepers at across the table and just like letting your opponent shoot you over and over again. Yes, that will work sometimes, but not, <laughs> not most much. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if, if you let your opponent tee off on you, you're going to have a bad day. So you need things to start the party, right? To get things going. Speaking of getting things going, I do want to call out some members of the War Room. Ooh, they who, get stuff going. We popped in. We've got Cal Knight. And ADR Wargaming, welcome to the War Room Bronze. Thank you so much for subscribing. Make sure you check out that Discord, maybe submit your list, maybe Jack fixes them. Maybe. Speaking of which, we got Jonathan Haynes, member for nine months at the War Room Gold, says, I doubt it is, but kind of hope uh, my World Leaders list is, or kind of hope the World Leaders list is my pathetic entry. Well, we, we might just have some World Leaders coming for you to kill, maim, and burn a little bit later, so don't go anywhere if you're into that stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. I think you might be surprised. All, All right. right. 
So what else do you like about Slanesh? And do you think there's any hole that needs to be, that we need to pull from a different Chaos God, maybe a unit or two to fix? I mean, you, you can definitely add like Splash Nerdlings and everybody loves Splash Nerdlings, but I want to keep it like true to its form here wherever possible. Absolutely. Um, I think as much as Shalaxy is a beast, 450 is just too many. I don't I don't like her at that price point. I don't think she actually kills everything in the game, no questions asked. She kills like... It kind of seems like she kills everything in the game, no questions asked. Something asks questions. Like you can't charge her into a custodian's brick and like expect to like over time win that fight. The Nightbringer will just bounce her. Yeah, there are things that like will the avatar of Kane will probably take her one v one, especially if he's got fortune up. Um, she's just not spectacular. You've had her fail a couple times on you, and she is four fifty, a full almost a quarter of your list. It's, there's also like a variety of games where the opponent has more than one powerful thing that you need to just connect and kill, and in those games she cannot do it all. So I want to really shift the strategy from trying to like kill whatever the thing is to score because demons are so good at scoring they're very good at scoring how do you feel about keepers at significantly cheaper 160 points cheaper than shellaxing i think keepers are good i think keepers at 290 are like a great durability price point and one keeper with the wit stealer swords so that's definitely something i want to get is amazing versus those elite infantry that exist in the game custodies i just mentioned terminators chosen anything like that you just send her in there she's like a bunch of three damage attacks a bunch of people die and she heals she can really start to tie like shift that tide a lot without costing 450 points yes like i think into custodies shalaxi is better but then the keeper gives you 160 extra points to do whatever you want with and that is better and that's total. that's really it's not shalaxi or keeper obviously one is better but it's keeper plus two chariots maybe better than shalaxi yeah 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 absolutely so do you want me to turn shalaxi into a keeper or are you okay with having one keeper right now i i think we just turn shalaxi into a keeper i like having double keeper because i think they're actually a durable enough profile where we can really like try to be tough at people to a degree. Yeah. At 290 with the five up feel no pain is the point where like that's ludicrously tough. 450 with a five up feel no pain is not, right? Yeah, the thing I would like to see though is one of those keepers getting the wit stealer sword for sure. All right, let me put that into the app. I believe the wit stealer sword is 15. Yes, only one of them gets that, of course. So. Um, and then that'll give us a lot of points back, approximately 145. Um, assuming this list was 2,000 points. Uh, can't spell. Wit Stewaller. We don't talk about that. No. It's only on the internet forever. Wit Stealer Sword. <laughs> All right. I believe it's 15. I'm going to double check in the app that I've got open right now. Um, Keeper of Secrets. Wit, uh, Soul Stealer. It's just Soul Stealer. I was close. All right. Uh, I believe she just has... A, um, a wit stealer sword as like her war gear. She probably does. She does have a wit stealer sword. It's six attacks at eight, two, three. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty good. Pretty good. Yes, the reason we're buying her the soul stealer is because every time she kills a model in close combat, she heals a wound. Yes. And she has a lot of attacks at damage three. And um, she does give herself the plus one AP. So she does go up to AP three nice. and all of that. So I think we need to add some chariot love to get the party started. Basically, I'm imagining we lead in with the chariots early. We try to box the chariots, let the chariots do the work early, and then we slam them with fiends and keepers after the fact. All right. Well, we do have 150 points right here. Let's let's go down the rest of the characters. How do you feel about Celeski, Nick? She's great. How do you feel about the Mask of Slanesh? She's fine. She's she's good in a mono Slanesh list. That's definitely the only time I would really ever consider using her, especially because she's your only loan op if we're not counting the other characters we have access to. Yeah, she can probably beat most other loan ops in a fight because she fights first with six attacks with dead wounds. Yeah, and she's, more importantly than that, she can make your army plus one to hit stuff and minus one to hit against you. So she really helps buff up your army in melee brawls. Yep, and you just need to pick an enemy within six inches and then they are either um, minus one to wound or plus one to wound. Yep. So, so it's the wound roll, not the hit roll, but uh, yeah. yeah. So she's solid. I don't think she needs to go anywhere. Um, really, I, I think we could maybe cut the demon net count or go deeper on the demon net count. That's the real choice I, I think we need to make. How do you feel about fiends? Because my impression on fiends is they are pretty deeply overcosted. They are pretty deeply overcosted, but I don't think they're like ludicrously terrible. I mean, let's go over what they do. Yeah. 
So they do not have a field mode pane anymore. <laughs> no, they're, so they're three four wounds to four wounds. They are four wounds at toughness five with a five up in Vuln OC2. They move 12, and I believe they are beasts. Uh, that would be correct, yeah. And they get, um, when an enemy unit other than vehicles and Titanic is within six inches, um, that enemy unit gets minus one to hit in melee and minus one to desperate escape checks because they'd really like to stay. Then they have five attacks apiece at five, two, two devastating wounds. If they're near the keeper, they would get five, three, two devastating wounds. Mm -hmm. It's not a terrible melee profile, but four wounds without a feel no pain is definitely not the same as four wounds with a feel no pain. No, they're, they're not what they used to be. Um, but I like that they're OC2 actually. I didn't catch that. that. That's a nice little thing there. I think in this army, you're going to hide them and you're going to deploy probably all three squads. Maybe you'll ingress one or something. But you're, you're going to deploy them. You're going to hide them. They move through walls and that's a really nice thing. And they move fast. They charge. They hit hard. The keepers buff them up to AP3. 5-3-2 is a legit combat you profile. can also give them plus one to wound off of the mass with the mass I th like this is the place where you would run the fiends i think what we can decide here is really do we want the second keeper that costs 290 or do we want to pump those points into demonettes because i really want to take the remaining 145 or whatever we 150, have 150 yeah. and put that into two chariots so that's 65 a pop and that gives us a little bit more skirmish and then i think we can decide do we are we happy with this this is like 19 80 at this point um or do we want to cut a keeper and then just straight up add 30 more demon so you, so you do like having 18 fiends in this list here i mean they move quick they move through walls i was not under the impression you liked them particularly i mean not not in a more mixed god demon list i think you have other options but we are in the mono slanesh territory that is fair that is fair so yes, yeah, so you're right, we have 20 points left. Other data sheets we can get. We have Fiends, we have Seekers. Are Seekers any good? Seekers are, are okay for tempo. They scout nine, they move very fast, so you can like go first, move, up, move block someone instantly. They reroll advances them. and charges, although I don't think you can advance. You can advance and charge right if you're in shadows. If you're in shadows, you could be in shadows uh, with like turn one advancing and charging with Seekers, because they can start the game on the objectives also. So if you go first, you scout onto the center objectives, you get shadows up, and then you advance and charge with real advance, real charge? If you, we, I could definitely go down the role of Seekers if we really want to make the plan of this army, just jam someone in their deployment zone and, and score like that by virtue if they can't get out of their deployment zone they're very bad points per damage so if our plan is to kill them they do not really help you kill them they, they don't no not really three attacks at 411 is not <clears throat> and the two attacks don't worry at 401 yeah, not the, really what we're looking i mean for. Now, remember everything near a keeper is 421 or 411 which definitely doesn't not help but these if these things are jamming you in your deployment zone turn one they're not really near the keeper probably. i like i like a couple units just as a um because their bases are huge their bases are, they can move and you can string days. out and you can scout and then advance reroll the advance and go like 30 inches across the board and just string out and go boop you the, know move the one thing i found which does suck for them is when you go second you take that scout move you hide behind the wall but your walls are already kind of jammed up with fiends and stuff so they end up trying to scout behind like a midfield wall and they're big they're big big long oval bases and it's very easy for your opponents to like with some mobility move up and get an angle on them yeah man this is less i mean 18 fiends is a lot of, it's, it's a lot a of, lot of lot stuff of, yeah i think i it's i think this list is chunkier than it looks like i think it's chunkier than it looks like but it's still not chunky if we want to make it chunky which is one direction we can take it we can cut probably about 20 of the demonettes and put those points into more chariots or like a soul grinder or something like that. Or we could cut the second keeper that doesn't have the sword and clean put 30 demonettes in there. And if we want to talk about turning some amount of demonettes into seekers, we can do that too. So what direction would you lean in? I think more demonettes more better because I think the keepers don't kill tanks and that's going to make them sad. And the one with the, with steal the soul stealer is awesome. The one without it is, is less? Is less. Okay. Yeah. So you want to go this direction. That oh. leaves us with 310, which isn't quite enough for 30 more demonettes. Oh, it's so close. But it is enough for two squads of demonettes and a squad of seekers. I think that's the next best thing. Okay, so the game plan here is to have a lot of demonettes and seekers to do, to do what with? And then fiends. So the idea is that 
we're not great at killing people. And I don't think we should lean into that because you can look at this demon data sheets all you want, but they don't just magically become great at killing people. What they are really good at is scoring. And now we have 50 bodies that move nine and can advance and charge and are OC2. And they're pretty small, they're 25 millimeter bases. So they're very easy to hide. You can deep strike them really effectively. And then that's just your OC control, objectives contesting, and they all have dev wounds. So with that many attacks with dev wounds, you can actually like an amount to damage against anything. Well, yeah. yeah, demonets for 11 points a model do seem really good. They're really good. They're very good. Demonets, I think, are like the best thing in Mono Slanesh, to be honest. Um, and, but then they don't, they, they are just demonets, though. So as points efficient as they are, they do not carry the game on their shoulders. Right. I mean, luckily, five units is 550. It's like 50 demonets is just over a quarter of your list. Right. That's it's a, a great start. It's a great start. And then the, the 18 fiends, that's there to give you speed. Demonets do only move nine. Fiends move faster. They move 12, yeah. And they, they also have... Um, um, just chunk. Like, Demonets are toughness three. These are toughness five. That's a big difference in breakpoint. Yeah. Um, Demonets die to storm. Bolter's fiends don't. Yeah. Um, that, that's pretty much it. So you want to have a mix of profile there. And it's a quantity of wounds. Like, the fiends there, that is 72 wounds of fiends. We have 50 wounds of demonets. That's not nothing if we're hiding, deep striking, playing like demons, and just using speed to dominate points is the idea. Keeper of Secrets, in my mind, is a buff piece um, in some matchups where its AP is relevant. In other matchups, it is the the counter beat stick hammer, so like against world eaters or custodies or things like that, which would normally just like take the minutes to the face and just kill them way faster than they're killing the, the minutes are killing them. The keeper can get involved, kill as he heal as he kills them, and then keep yeah, it's, them it's also good into like, things like orcs that would give you some problems there. Orcs can shred through a lot of this, but the Keeper, as long as the Keeper doesn't get one-rounded, which is very tough with the 5 of Feel No Pain. And with Demonets and Fiends standing in front of them. And with, yeah, and with controlling the fight, the Keeper can really just bowling ball through the army. And in those matchups where you're doing combat brawling, Master mass. Slanesh babysits next to the Keeper, you try to fight this Keeper, minus one to wound. Can babysit in the middle of the Demonets also, oh, and just yeah. be like a 6-inch or minus one to wound. You. And if you need, a, so Zaleski in my mind often will go solo and deep strike attack the backfield. She's so good at running through backfields and in this style of army she can actually sneak her way into that really well. If you need extra hitting punch you can also attach her to demonettes. Bada boom bada bing, get those crit, crit wound fives, crit dev wound fives. I, my, oftentimes that will kill something that is kind of outside the threshold of your normal damage range. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's super good. I would want to see this on the table to really. This feels like an army where you'd have to see it on the table to experience like how, good how many is. wounds yeah. it is and how how good the fight control would be. Um, but the fight control seems pretty decent. Does anything in here fight first? Uh, you can add transweavers to demonettes to start getting fights first in here. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that that's worth it, but I'd probably look at those Seekers and Seeker Chariots, which are, I like all of that. I like that amount of Seeker, Seeker Chariot to be some non-committal nonsense that requires some more effort than your opponent wants to expend. And the Seeker Chariots and the regular Seekers are just a great move block tool. I do think the Mask is really annoying because minus one to wound on Demonettes in combat is not where you want to be. If you're Strength 4, Strength 5, you're wounding them on 4s, and then they get a 4 up, a 5 up in Vuln, which is really miserable. Yeah. And then... Um, and then they can heal, right? They they don't really heal. You'd have to take the Infernal and Rapturous, and she's kind of bad. They heal D three if they pass a battle shock, right? So if you get if it down you're to in like shadows, four, yeah. and you're just like, all yeah. right, they're back. They have they have abilities to heal, but very low reliability. Talk to me about the Enrapturous. She does nothing. She has a gun, so your demonettes now get the ability to advance in action. She can bring back D three demonettes in your command phase. That gun is kind of it looks good. The gun but it's the really gun not. flirts with being good, much like demonettes flirt with everything. Yes. <laughs> and she does wow, no damage. So she just returns D three demonettes if they lived through the combat. That's not amazing. I, I did say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely did not don't suggest think, her. I definitely don't think the Enrapturous is the way. Um, as cool as it is to like go down to four and then take your battle shock and heal D three and then um, heal another D3, and you're like, wow, I'm up to eight. A lot of the time, if people are invested, <laughs> like 170-point de squad of demonettes that dies like a 110-point squad of demonettes does not sound good. She's also assassinate. Like, she goes just, I, I think we are where we want to be. I Fair enough. We really need to change it. Brother Tobias, I'm happy that you're trying to live the old Slaneshi dreams. We basically cut Shalaxi, and we cut... 
we, we cut the lax thing, we added 20 demon nets, two secret chariots, and eight seekers. And I think five units and a lot more OC and board presence will do more for you than Shalax. And we got Soul Stealer in there, which Anything. is very good. Is there a cap of how much you can heal on that, or is it as much as you can kill? I think it's as much as you can kill. Yeah, know. it's on a four up. So every time you kill a model immediately, so you can like interrupt and do it, you can do things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, immediately you roll a die, and if you're within Shadows of Chaos, you add a one to the result. So if you're in Shadows, you'd be on a three up. Against non-elite armies that don't really kill her effectively and have lots of infantry, I'm thinking like certain variations of orcs or maybe endless ward. She literally can't die. Yeah. 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 Against like MSU orcs, they have to play the game around her. Yeah, right. <laughs> not not through her. And, and like MSU orcs, those kinds of things, they like gaunts, you know, that that will threaten your demonettes, unfortunately. So that having something that doesn't die to that is actually quite nice. Yeah. And even against like custodies, the ability to heal three, the ability to heal four if you do grind your way through a combat, mm -hmm. is important to try to survive the next one. Definitely. So, Brother Tobias, thank you so much for submitting your list. Hopefully you enjoy our rendition of it. But what else do we have to fix today? All Mr. right, Jack? next up we have something that's a little more in my wheelhouse. We've got John Sakari's World Eaters. Angry. God, everyone Angry. loves World Eaters, and I will not hear otherwise. I believe that is Jonathan Haynes, because it would be a bit of a weird coincidence if it was John and John. So I'm, I'm happy if that is the case. You have to let us know. So it's really interesting, Jack, because you've got uh, your world leaders. You just whipped them out to the tournament and then won with Lord of Skulls. And we actually have that coming out on a podcast next week. How, how interesting. How There's interesting. a podcast coming out? So if you're interested in world leaders, we're, we're going to tell you about how to world leaders. <laughs> Uh, so that's a very different way of world leaders, and there was a world leaders list on last week, but they're going to be very different. So talk to me about what this one is. So this one is Angron, Karn, three Master of Executions, one of them has Berserker Glaive, that's the good one. Then we have a Demon Prince with Helm of Brazen Ire, ten Jackals, four units of five Corn Berserkers, Three eight bound and six exalted eight bound. And the question that Matthew is asking is the question that I'm asking, which is, do you notice anything that's missing out of this list, Nikki? Uh, there's no Lord of Skulls. There's yes, there's no Lord of Skulls, and there almost certainly won't be by the time we're done, because <laughs> um, Lord of Skulls is not like necessary. It's just something fun you can do. Um, the question is, are those berserkers walking up the board? No, Jack. If they're walking up the board, they're dead. Yes, <laughs> yes. If you want to run no rhinos, what you're going to do, because uh, apparently Jonathan Haynes does not own any. Oh. You definitely want to pick them up. We're going to assume that this list has them, because without them, Corn Berserkers do not work. Um, if you try to run them up the board, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, um, definitely if, recommend getting some rhinos. If, yeah. you, if you want to go rhino list, it's totally fine. You just cut all the Corn Berserkers and you max out on 8-band and Exalted 8-band. Exalted first, they are better. So you take like 6-6-3 six, six, Exalted and then like 3-3-3 three, three, three Regular or something to that effect. So the reason Corn Berserkers on foot don't work and why we're really, um, you know, suggesting we get the Rhinos here is basically because if you play anyone with speed or indirect, they, you're at the mercy of them. Indirect can just choose to shoot your Berserkers and the Berserkers are made to die to things like Night Spinners and the Guard Army and anything like that. And then charging, you're very vulnerable to charging. You can just be charged. You're walking around the board so, and you're slower than fast moving assault units. So you're just going to get hit first by them too. Yeah. So the, the idea here is the Masters of Executions give fight first to the Corn Berserkers. <laughs> That's fair. Which is nice. And Karn always fights on death and he is not a, uh, he's not a wimp. So that does help. Although you will get charged by things that don't care about a Master of Executions and five Corn Berserkers, which is a shocking amount of the meta. Um, if you want to see, Daryl, if you want to see a Lord of Skulls list that Siegs and I wrote uh, last week on World Eaters, we wrote a list that had all demon engines. So no, a, lot of, a lot less infantry and all demon engines. So I'd go check that out if you want to see that. But while we're here, we're going to go all infantry. The Corn Berserkers fighting first are not like nothing, but they're not that scary, right? They're four attacks at 5 one, one. There's only five of them. One dude has a heavy melee weapon. Um, and then the Master of Executions at damage two with five attacks is just not the same. 
I, I really think if you don't have rhinos, we could run a 10 man berserker squad with the master or something. And then it's got a little more chonk and you can try to make some blood surge matter there. And like you were saying, the regular dudes are not that hard hitting. It's like two berserkers have special weapons and the master himself is decent. Yeah, and you do rely on the Berserkers for quantity of attacks into things like Catan, I've found. Mm -hmm. um, things like Catan, you go in with either Karn or the Master of Executions, you have Anger on nearby to reroll hits. On the charge, there's Strength 6, you pop 1 CP plus 1 to wound, and all of a sudden you're pouring damage 1 into the Catan. They hate that. So, you do. I do like having a 10-man. It's also really hard to work through with, um, with the Blood Surges, because you'll just surge and surge and surge and surge if they keep chipping you away. And some armies can't kill the whole unit all at once. Yeah. In addition, a 10-man is very scary uh, as on the fights first with the Berserker Glaive or with Karn, although they, they don't fight first at that point. So I think one of the other ideas that Jonathan's doing here is the Dian Prince with Helm of Brazen Ire is super tough to kill, and then he provides an aura of 5 plus invulnerable saves to all these Corn Berserkers. Um, I just don't think that's worth it, to be honest. Like him... Hoarding around these berserkers to give them five ups, like they're wearing power armor. Most of the time, they're taking five ups, if not four ups, anyway. And then yes. on top of that, you, they, they're going to die to a quantity of attacks if they're just like space marines walking forward across the table. So a five bindle might save them from the stray last cannon if you're in the open, but that's such a niche thing and not what's actually going to be threatening them. Yes. Um, also, I would rather have twice as many corn berserkers without the four pin vulnerable. Or without the five up, sorry. Yeah. Um, than half as many with the five up. Yeah. So the trick here, right, is that you can have ten corn berserkers next to the demon prince, and they have a five up invuln. Then you go to ground, and they get a six up invuln, which means since you already have an invuln, you get a four up. Oh, that's kind of nice. That is pretty neat, though. But right? you, you know what makes that more? You know, doing it on a ten man with with the berserker glaive man, not a five man. Yes, I also don't think the demon prince on foot is particularly good here. Yeah, I think you don't, don't have enough units either. that it wants to buff. Mm -hmm. It's fairly slow. Helm of Brazen Ire is good. It's half damage. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, big tough things with half damage are good. Yeah. I mean, he as his own piece, he can wander up the table, probably get ignored for most of the game, then mid to late game be a Demon Prince. I don't think that's bad. But in the World Eater's army, in the context of how World Eaters want to play, it's, it's more about being able to pressure at various speeds with certain profiles. And I think Exalted 8-Bound will just hit harder than the Prince, faster than the Prince, and do what you want more than the Prince. Yes, Exalted 8-Bound and Angron are my two favorite data sheets in World Eaters. I think they're really good. Exalted move very... They basically fix the problems that the Corn Berserkers have on foot. Yeah, I mean, they it, move it, 9 base, yeah. which means they can get up to really ridiculous speeds if you put buffs on them. And the main issue here is that, like, Berserkers can move 8 and advance, you know, 6 and go 14, right? But the problem is you don't always want to do that. You don't want to advance and charge plus 2 move because then you're like, oh, I don't have any offensive or defensive buffs at all. So oftentimes you're going to be moving six, advancing six, or you're just going to be moving eight and charging. Whereas an eight bound can really, really have that speed, even if you only have one speed buff up. Um, and they also hit really, really hard, whereas corn berserkers kind of don't. You kind of need a character, and the master of executions without berserker glaive don't hit super hard. So I'm going to pull out the master of executions. Yeah, go for it. That are not berserker glaive. Berserker glaive can stay. That guy slams. That guy, he doesn't hit as hard as he used to, but he still hits hard. Yeah, he really does. He really does. Um, so something that is possible is a Demon Prince with wings. What does he do for you? So instead of trying to be this aura that, like, helps out this stuff, right? Right. Demon Prince with wings, um, start of the fight phase, gives battle shock checks to every enemy in engagement range. Mm -hmm. And finally, his other ability is at the start of the battle, you pick an enemy unit. And against that enemy unit, you reroll hits and wounds. Okay. There is the downside of at the end of the battle, if you've not killed that target... Your prince dies, right? Your prince dies, which, like, maybe gives him some assassinate points. Probably doesn't matter. It probably doesn't matter. Like, it's a... Is it, like, after the game is over, he counts as dead? Or is it, like, if you're holding that objective on bottom of five, now you're not? At the end of the battle, this model is destroyed. I don't know what that means. <laughs> that means after everything. <laughs> <laughs> that means after holding objectives. That means after scoring secondaries. Yeah. The only time it... I think it's even after your opponent can 
can claim their cards or whatever. Okay, so so that's a rule. It, it might <laughs> it, they might be able to claim cards if they have like assassinate ready, but like that's super uh, niche. But even still, like calling your shot, like uh, if they have like a wraith knight, and it's like my prince would like to reroll hits and wounds versus your wraith knight. Sure, try to get that. That's like the chess match you're playing. But in, against most armies, there's not often one thing that I'm just going to want to hit. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there usually is a unit that's kind of like kind of tough. Mm -hmm. The prince does not need to be the one to kill it. Right. Right. Um, they just have to be. Yeah, dead. It, it, it's nice as a bonus, but it's not like like Angron can go kill it. I'm not. I don't have to use this prince. It's not overall the strategy. It's yeah. A side quest. I I do think that demon prince. So you can give him berserker glaive if you really want to get plus one strength and attacks on his um, melee weapon, which is pretty good. Right, that would make it on the charge eight attacks at eleven to four mm -hmm. with reroll hits and wounds against your chosen target. Well, I was thinking, what if we just take those masters of executions out like you did, because that is two hundred points back, and then we cut this prince altogether. That's four twenty five back, and now we have enough for like a lot of stuff. I don't know. Like, <laughs> we could do whatever we want. Several, several <laughs> things. Yeah, let me cut them out of the, the list. I have it up on my, my phone. So let's cut those out. And we have a lot of points for things. We, in fact, have 425 points for things. I, I think... Um, do you want to collapse these together? I do want to collapse those together. I want two 10-mans instead of one, two, four or five-mans. And usually that's kind of not the way I like to build lists. I prefer having more stuff. But when it comes to Corn Berserkers, to make use of Blood Surge and characters and the way the units want to operate, the larger squads give you that buffer to actually get in and do stuff. I tend to agree. I like to take my uh, Berserkers when I take them in 10-mans. I usually like to take one... 10 man with either Karn or Master of Executions. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan, I, I'm just going to tell you to bite the bullet. It's and worth take it. some rhinos. It's worth it. It's, the rhinos are just worth it. It will really make this list come together. Um, so, I promise. Um, if we don't have rhinos, I mean, you can walk the Berserkers and it will just be a slower version of the same thing. You with, get like an extra squad of Exalted or something, or regular 8-bound You get, you get 150 back instead of two Rhinos, right? So 150 could be three regular 8-bound, or spring a little bit more points, and you get three Exalted 8-bound. Or you can get two more into Jackals, or two into Spawn. Those are all very side grade. The Rhinos change how your list operates at a fundamental level, and for that, I think they really are worth the investment. I, I, would, I would agree 100%. Now, let's look at how many points we have left. We have... 275 points. That's so close to 6 8 bound, 6 exalted 8 bound. It, it is. It's very close. Um, so the question we need to ask here is, do we want to go MSU with the 8 bound, or do we want to try and glom up, right? Because we can... Uh, 275 is... I mean, we're... We're almost at uh, Anthony's list. Oh, we're, we're really <laughs> close, too. Because, like, you add a bunch of 8 bound, you're like, well, if I cut 5 berserkers, I, I get... Yeah. Um, well, what, let's talk about the pros and cons of Exalted 8-bound and Regular 8-bound. Like, because uh, they're, they're different price points and then like different sizes, right? Threes yeah. versus sixes are used differently. What, what is the ratio you like? So Exalted, in my, I, in my opinion, I want three copies of Exalted. I because want, they're just that great. They're just the best, one of the best data sheets in the book. Angron is the best, and then I think the second is Exalted. Mm -hmm. They're a bit expensive. Here's the difference. Regular 8-bound, I'm going to assume everything's on the charge, are 7 attacks at 6-2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. All right? Lacerators is 5 attacks at 10-2-3. That's regular 8-bound. Yep. They hit on 3s. Exalted 8-bound have two weapon profiles. One of them is strength 15 on the charge, AP 3, damage 2 with 4 attacks. They hit mm -hmm. on 3s. The other one is 6 attacks at 7-2-2 two, two that hit on 2s. So overall, damage-wise, the Exalted have the oomph to get through high toughness targets because you go with the Chain Fists. And the pair to 8-bound Chain Fists are 6 attacks at that 15-3-2 with reroll wounds. That hurts. That yeah. hurts a lot. That dude lives through an activation, walks over, and domes a vehicle. Um, so that they hit harder, but they also have different abilities. 8-bound Scout natively. Exalted 8-bound need Invocatus. I'm going to suggest we take Invocatus. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Regular 8-bound are a 6-inch aura of reroll 1s to wound, and if your targets will have strength reroll full wounds, that doesn't come up as much. Um, exalted 8-bound are a 6-inch aura of, hey, would you... I'm in combat with you. Don't would, leave. Would you like to fall back? I would. 
I don't like the Well, just roll two dice for me and see if you're allowed to. I don't have dice. Well, then you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and because it's a six-inch aura, when if you do have a go turn and you hit your opponent, you're going to be forcing a lot of those checks. So, yeah, I mean, Exalted Eight Bound as the opponent totally terrify me. Um, I don't like them. Every, even one Exalted Eight Bound is like, I can't, that, that will kill whatever it wants. Oh, final thing is Exalted Eight Bound have a six-up Field No Pain natively, and Eight Bound don't. So when you go with the Field No Pain thing, which I love to do, you get a five-up on Exalted. So they are tougher, they hit harder, they can lock you in combat. So why What's do people like regular Eight Bound? Is it just uh, they're cheaper? They're cheaper. And they are a six inch real ones to wound aura, so I like to have one unit. Okay. They're also a decent skirmisher, right? Um, they're a little on the expensive end for skirmishers, but damn, do they hit hard. I mean, so, if, like, if you need a skirmisher, that's the skirmisher. <laughs> yeah, like a three man eight bound being slung out onto objective to kill a medium toughness thing and then die and sticky the objective under them is a very valuable way to use them. Yeah. And then having, because you can plus one to wound on exalted. Having eight bound nearby, killing something else to give them reroll ones to wound is very helpful. Okay, so what if we we want to get Invocatus, you said, and we want to get more eight bound? What if we just take another three man exalted eight bound and Invocatus? Is that points? I believe that is not points. That oh. is 300 points. That's close to points. Yes. Um, that is close to points. Let me think about this because mm -hmm. this is a lot of. Um, I don't think we can afford the six-man exalted here. I think oh. it's going to be split up into two three-mans. Oh. And then you take a third three-man. So three three-mans? Three okay. three-mans. Okay. That's, that's the same number I just suggested. It's split up more. Yes. I, uh, I think our, our big heavy hitters are going to have to be Karn and the Master of Executions in the Berserkers. Yeah. And Angron. Yeah. And then I, eight bound for tradesies. Yeah. Eight bound. Well, they still hit really hard. They're always going <laughs> to tradesies. Yeah. <laughs> They still hit ludicrously hard. I love my six brick of Exalted. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that this list, if you want to go 20 core Berserkers, is going to be... Um, and I, it's yeah. a little point strapped. And I know uh, our, our friend Jonathan here is trying to be a little more budget conscious, so this is closer to the model range he initially suggested. Yeah. So if we have this, then we have 115 points left. How much is Invocatus? He's 140. Do so we need Invocatus? We probably do. So Exalted 8-Bound scout really far. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so Exalted 8-Bound, well, sorry, they don't scout really far. They move really far. If you give them a 6-inch scout move, they can bury into the center of the board, things like that. Um, regular 8-Bound can scout natively, which is very nice. Um, so you do at least have a little scout, and also Invocatus is just kind of a good unit by themselves. Do you know Invocatus' stats? Toughness 6, 2 up, 4 up, 8 wounds, with the 6 up feel no pain that the army will give you. 12 attacks, uh, 8 of them have dev wounds and are AP2 damage 2, uh, 4 of them have lance, mm -hmm. and you'll have sustained, and this is a 2 up and, tough, and 8 wounds. Like, Invo is a really good unit. Um, just by themselves as a yeah. really good skirmish. You don't join Invocatus to anything. Invocatus runs around by themselves. And he's 140, you said? He is 140 points. Man, world leaders do not make list building easy on you. No, no, they don't. Um, my standard list right now is... Hold on, let me do this. Invocatus at 140. World leaders' lists tend to run very light on units. You do Your units can do a ton... But you don't have a lot of them. So, Jack, we're over in points now? By 25. Okay, how do we fix that? We could cut Berserker Glaive. It's exactly 25 points. I hate that, but I hate that. it is there. It is, it is there. Um, I hate it. I know Jonathan said he does love his Berserkers. So, an, a, one obvious move could be cut a 10-man to a 5-man. Um, then I, I just don't want to do that for the sake of word to this list for This is else. also almost exactly Anthony's list. If we cut the 10-man to a 5-man and we combine the three, two threes into a six, that is literally Anthony's list. Well, that's probably a good army. Though. It's a very good <laughs> army. You have several options to go here. Um, you have several options. You can do that, and that would become Anthony Vanell's list, and it is very good. I think he gets enough points back to get another squad of jackals. That list rocks. Um, my particular build is one 10-man corn... Uh, not, the, not the Lord of Skulls build. Um, 
the build would be you cut a 10 man berserkers and either the master of executions or karn if you take karn you end up with 25 points left over so you can run whichever one you feel is better um and then you get six three three exalted eight bound and two spawn at the end yeah which i really like spawn spawn are really good so the only other thing i could think of if we want to keep the units that we currently have intact for jonathan here um, aside from cutting the Berserk Blade for a clean 25, would actually be to cut a Rhino, since he doesn't own Rhinos, and then we get 50 points back, which, can we spend 50 points? Um, funny story about that. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> uh, no, but what we can do is we can turn 3 Exalted into 3 8 Bound. Okay. So now all of the scouts, you have 5 units of scout. Is it quite as good? No, but what we get at the end is spawn. Oh, and then because we, we have some points left. I like that, actually. I like that quite a lot. Because I, I think the Berserk Glaive is important for actually making that unit like the next level scary that it wants to be. And then Spawn and World Eaters, I just think, are phenomenal. I think they're a great, great, great data sheet. Yeah, I think Spawn are... They're one of my favorite uh, data sheets. Mm -hmm. um, I would... I, I just take them. I take two of two of two Spawn in every World Eaters list I write. Um, because they're just... Just jerks. So let's get a final count. Make sure this is this is. Make sure this is kosher. Yeah. All right. So we have ten jackals, twenty corn berserkers. While well, you're counting that, we got a question from Dusk. Um, why do we like spawn series? Question. Well, actually, it's just that they're a great skirmisher. They're sixty-five points uh, in world eaters. They have a base five of feel no pain, like all spawn do. But then if you do the feel no pain blood god chant then you get four feel of pain they hit that much harder with plus one strength plus one attack and whatever other blood god buffs you're getting they can be very fast which is nice and again world leaders are unit starved as a faction we're looking at these points cost for our stuff so the fact that it is a small cheap unit is in and of itself a value yeah spawn win every skirmish fight ever because they heal wounds d3 in each player's command phase so if your opponent swings at them and doesn't kill them they're back to full um they don't res models but with a four up feel no pain, four up armor, cover, um, you know, f toughness five, it's very difficult to chew through them a lot more than people think. Definitely. Um, and you're going to be left over with the models. They do hit hard because they'll get sustained, they'll get plus one strength and attacks, all the sort of things that you have. They'll win like every skirmish fight. Two spawn versus five scouts, not even close who wins that one. Mm -hmm. And then when they die, there's something cheap that was on an objective that can drop sticky on it, which is very important. So we got a $10 super chat from Mark Skenendor. Hopefully Skenendor, yeah. $10. Hey guys, what kind of Death Guard list do you think you will be doing well in teams? Thank you so much for your super chat, Mark. Um, I really like that the Terminator Death Shroud's Bam can kill some custodies. I think it's very good into custodies, um, especially if they don't take tanks. Yeah. They don't take the Caladius. Um, but into custodies, into Necrons, yeah. you lower their toughness, you hit the you you know, you don't even need to reduce their save oftentimes. Mm -hmm. But you can if you really want to make like bolters and stuff and random flamers really hurt. Plague Marines and Rhinos is a good baseline. You probably don't need to run 60 anymore, but like some amount with some Death Shrouds to like really lay Flamer into people. There's a, the Flamers are yep. good in the meta today. I like 30, 30 Plague Marines. Um, I like a unit of Death Shrouds. I think that's quite good. Mm -hmm. I also think Mortarian has had a real resurgence yeah. because of his aura of Ignore Modifiers has been clarified to mean damage reduction and AP reduction. So if you take him, you take a bunch of, um, like, I'm pretty sure you can make a list that's like Mortarian, three Plague Burst Crawlers, 30 um, Plague Marines in Rhinos, and then, like, Trash. Also, I think the Terminators. I think you can get, I think you can get all of that in. You'll be very tight to the budget. You might be a little bit over, but something like that could really make Custodies and other, like, armies like that really annoyed. Thanks so much for your super chat, Mark. So, Jack, where do we land on this list? Is it legal? Is 2K on the nose? We did it. We did it. Jonathan, hopefully you enjoy your 8-bound Corn Berserker smorgasbord. I cannot stress to you enough how much you want these rhinos, though. Yes, the rhinos are very helpful. I think if you're going double rhino, you can also check out the build that uh, Anthony Vanilla has been throwing around. And if you want to go single rhino and 10 Corn Berserkers, you can check out the build that uh, I think I posted up. I think it's in the... Um, it's in the World Eaters State of the Faction. 
um, you can check that out in the War Room if you want to try that. Excellent. There is a description with the link down below, thewarroom.bhx.tv, three-day free trial, the War Room's all that good stuff, and you get your list submitted and fixed by us. There you go. All right, last list back in your wheelhouse, Nikki. You got CSM. The Chaos Space Marines. Awers here with his Slaves to Darkness army. So Chaos Space Marines recently just took big nerfs in the balance state of sleep, and everyone is very curious how they can operate. I quite like this framework that Awers has come up with. Let's go through it. We've got two Chaos Lords. Each are undivided with the Demon Hammer and the Plasma Pistol. Harkin World Claimer and a Warpsmith with the Eye of Zinch to refund CP. Then we've got 10 Cultists, uh, the Remark of Nurgle, 2x5 Undivided Chosen, 3x5 Slanesh Warp Towns, uh, 10 Raptors that are Undivided uh, with 4 Melted Guns, a Chaos Rhino to house those Chosen, 1, 2, 3 Predator Destructors with Laz Cannons and Mark of Nurgle, an Undivided Forge Fiend with Ectoplasma Cannons, and 3x3 three three Nurglings. All right, so Awers says, this list was able to chew through some Wraiths and Catan, but Land Raider Redeemer put a big old stop sign in front of it. Yeah, that is a big challenge for the MSU style of Space Marine build, unfortunately, is Land Raider Demons with Armor of Contempt. Um, there's a few things you can do about them. Um, the Obliterators, of course, can muscle through. Uh, I don't think Abaddon wants to be in this army, but he could rip a Round Raider right open. Um, and I found an Undivided Lord with the 10-man Chosen can actually crack it as well. Um, but let's go through kind of like what this list is doing. Yeah, and, please please lay it out for me. And uh, yeah, so basically you're going to take the two Lords with the Chosen, put them into the Rhino, and that's going to be what it always has been. Undivided like chosen, chosen, chosen Rhino. Chosen Rhino. How, are we, how do we feel about Chosen Rhinos? Because that is an expense. I mean, sorry, let's get through the rest of it, and then we can, uh, we can sure. talk about stuff. Um, Harkin World Claimer is going to join to the 10 Raptors. He himself hits very hard, and then that unit is undivided, so it's going to give them reroll uh, hit. Hits a real ones to hit now and real wounds when they use the stratagem. Not bad for those four melted guns and their close combat. Um, it's a little expensive. The warp smith with the eye is inch basically stands there, gives plus one to hit to a tank, heals a tank, you know, normal tech marine type stuff. And then the eye of zinch says when he does a dark pact, I believe it's roll another leadership test after that, so you have to roll two leadership tests in a row, and then uh, you get a command point back. And then I'll, I'll make sure that, that sure that's it's, it's a relic I don't typically see. Uh, Ten Nurgle cultists, um, three by five warp towns. That's MSU skirmish. They actually only cost 110 points, not 120, um, but they're nice, fast. I don't really want to change that. Uh, and then the Predators and Destructors with Mark of Nurgle, that's something we're seeing as a bit of a resurgence lately because we're trying to explore what our gun options are with 200 point Forge Fiends, 180 point Obliterators. I quite like Predators. I think they're very good. What I think we're doing with the Predators is we're missing an opportunity to flex, though. Predator Destructors... I, I never want to miss an opportunity to flex. With Mark Zinch is the sauce jack. Okay, why is that? I heard I saw somebody down in the comments also posting about that being the weird special sauce. So Mark of Zinch will give you lethal hits on fives for your shooting attacks. And then if you give your Predator Destructors heavy bolters... Heavy Bolters already have sustained hits one. So now they're getting crit five sustained hits and lethal hits on your Heavy Bolters. And Predator Destructors have a rule that says when they shoot infantry, they get an additional point of AP. So now we're lethal crit fives, sustained, lethal sustained fives, Heavy Bolters, AP two into infantry. The, the auto cannon will just be getting lethal fives, which makes up for its strength nine, because that's kind of the worst part so about it. you can it. shoot into higher toughness things yeah. if necessary. And things like the Havoc Launcher and Combi Bolter, they really like lethal fives too. Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, so even over not being able to be shot back, I mean, I assume that that's not actually that, that That's scary. like not a thing this army is even making use of, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, you could theoretically make a Predator alone up, but you have three Predators. That's just not really that. I'm going to, the, unfortunately. The, the real choice is do we want some sustained five LAS cannons to try to crack that Land Raider Redeemer that he mentioned, or do we want this volume to just pepper, pepper things effectively? And I think the sustained five LAS cannons are still not going to crack the Land Raider that effectively. I, I would tend to agree. Wounding on fours into a three up with Armor of Contempt is a bad time. Yeah, so let's change those to Heavy Bolters. Okay, and so you get those lethal sustained fives off the Heavy Bolters. Fives. So I definitely like to run Predators. But what we're missing here is a skirmishy MSU unit to go onto objectives. Warp Towns are great for charging onto your opponent's objectives 
and taking them off real quick for a turn, but they're not durable. They are gone as soon as they step onto an objective, typically. Yes, they're, um, not, they're not durable. They, they hit hard for their points. They're fast, but they're not durable. So we're definitely missing some, like, objective-holding units. And I think one thing that we definitely can just kind of find points from is Harkin, the Warp Smith, and the Ten Raptors, that whole section of 380. Harkin and the Raptors is a package, and he definitely is the only way I would like to run a 10-man Raptor, and undivided, they kick kind of hard. But the undivided strat got nerfed, and frankly, it, it still doesn't hit hard. Nine dudes are swinging around with AP1 and Strength 4. What does Harkin damage. give Raptors? He gives them... Uh, some weird leadership shenanigans is it's not much he just himself he, is a badass character he um he does give them a really nasty charge mortals oh that's right when he you charge in that. you roll a die for every model in the unit and on a four up they take a mortal that's not bad i don't want to pretend that's bad i think harkin like i said makes the 10 raptors a considerable choice but it's just not worth 280 or 290 no 2 270 270 it's yeah, I could definitely see that being cut. What do you think of, how do you feel, this is kind of going in a completely different direction, but whatever. Sure. How do you feel about um, the Lucius Fight First unit? I think it's hard to deliver. I think when you get to apply it in the right spot, it's awesome, but that's like a little more of a niche scenario than a commonly done thing. It's also very expensive. Okay, fair enough. How do we feel about Chaos Lords plus Chosen? Um, I think they're expensive. I don't inherently hate them because um, they are still good. They're just very pricey. Because um, I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. with those charge mortals, I do actually kind of like Harkin Raptors. I don't think they do anything. Okay. Um, what, do you, what do you like about the charge mortals? How does it work? So you just pick an enemy unit in engagement range and you roll a die for every model in the unit on a four if they take a mortal. Okay. So if one dude taps you, you roll 11 dice and yeah. four ups are mortals. They also probably have grenades. So if they're running up, they can go grenades, charge mortal, and like kill the avatar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, I, I think there are some data sheets that like would hate to just have surprise mortals done to them like that. Magnus, avatar, you know, those kinds the of things. The Catan also really don't like taking eight mortals out of nowhere, grenade, charge. That's true. I mean, that unit in and of itself can kill a land raider, you know, if you want to think about the melt gun shots with the real wounds, the mortals, and all that. It is 270 points, and it's not that fast. There is no advance in charge, so it just moves 12 and, and goes for it, which is why I just don't think it's that spectacular. Okay. If you want to cut them, we totally can. Let's uh, cut this Warp Smith. Mm -hmm. um, so it's every time the Warp Smith packs, you take a leadership check, and yeah. if you pass it, you get a CP. Yeah. Sometimes getting a CP, 110 points, it, oh, I don't really It's know just not that great. I mean, I know he also buffs your tanks, but he, he just, he's 110. How do Raptors not have grenades? Raptors don't have grenades? Oh my god. Jack, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. That just makes me angry. All right, all right, okay. all right, all right. Um, what I think is good for holding objectives, because I kind of highlighted that as one of our big challenges, is Rhino is full of dudes. Yeah, what you meant not is like, it's hard to hold objectives. It's hard to hold objectives without putting a unit forward that your opponent would be like, yeah, I'd like to shoot that. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard to put a model on an objective. That is a movement phase. It is hard to hold an objective through your opponent's turn. Yeah, <laughs> very difficult. What yeah. were you saying? Um, to help us with the objective holding challenge, I think we can really invest heavily into rhinos with stuff. Um, I, okay, so what kind of stuff are we looking to put in these rhinos? I really like legionnaires in rhinos. They're OC2, they reroll wounds, they box pretty well. Um, uh, a rhino is 75, a legionnaire package of two is 180. So that's 255, I think For we could... 10 plus a rhino? Yeah. Like two by five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we just slot that in right here, and that allows us some flexibility in our in our... Lord, because our lords and chosen don't have to go into one rhino. Now we put five lords and chosen into one rhino, five lords and chosen into another rhino, five legionnaires in each. And now two sections of the table have a rhino staged behind terrain, and then out of them can either be this little skirmisher, or out of them can be this big chosen smashy pants party. I do like smashy pants parties. Speaking of which, I would like to... I would like to shout out uh, No Dab. Welcome to the War Room Bronze. Welcome, Welcome No in. Dab. 
No dabbing it up. Thank you. Uh, they're they're going to have to match the Chosen, though, in terms of Mark. Oh, because of the rhinos. Because of the rhinos. Oh, that's so sad. They already reroll wounds. They did nerf this army. I know. It's, it's a real shame. I wish they hadn't. So now I feel like we have a foundation. We've got two rhinos on two flanks, or two like one objective and one center point, and they're both threatening a lot of similar things, redundancy. Warp Talons do aggressive skirmish. Predators do midfield skirmish and keep people honest. And we have the Forge Fiend to be the ranged firepower hammer. How many points we got left? We have 125. And we don't need three squads of three Nerdlings, so we can really get more than 125 as we see fit. Oh, yes, because we do have the Nerdlings in Yes. Here. Um, Do you want to just keep one in? And we could start with one. I find two to be a really nice sweet spot. Let's start with two. Let's start with two. I like to have two when I can get two. Hey, they don't hold objectives, but they do deep strike. They do move block. They do give you minus one to hit. Although the minus one to hit doesn't really matter in the, five. The way I would use land. them in this army is to have one do your backfield expansion area where you don't have an objective. Because all these units don't want to be like screening. You know, No one wants to sit in the back and screen. That's three nerglings. Yeah. And then... The other unit goes in the center, ideally behind a ruin, and just pushes the deploy homers button every single turn. That's pretty good. Yeah. We have 165 points left. Okay, so we could go with a variety of options. There's a, there's a lot of creative freedom we could do here. What are you thinking, Jack? Oh, man, so it's, it's a little tough. If we're looking at units I like... So the, the problem to me, right, is that the Chosen are expensive. They are 225 points for five chosen plus a lord and they really don't hit that hard anymore mm -hmm. they are, they really took a hit i like legionaries a lot more i would like legionaries if they were slanesh we can we can do a quick little conversion even keeping the lords just changing their mark to slanesh and then changing the chosen down to legionnaires once the legionnaires are all slanesh lord slanesh you can advance and charge for one cp i will say this army is cp starved because we are probably we did take things. out the guy who gives us the cp but you can kind of save cp um by not having to profane zeal and leaning on your legionaries to just reroll wounds by punching on objectives there's also something to be said for if you can advance and charge your opponent is going to stay a lot further back and then you might not have to advance and charge because they're they're either staying all the way back or they're like, all right, I might as well go in because you have advance and charge and then you don't need to use it to charge or you can just don't need to use it because you're not going to get out of your rhino in the first place because they've already respected your advance and charge. The other side of that coin, though, is only one of your units can advance and charge. So if you have four Slanesh Legionnaire units and three Slanesh Warp Talons, most of that is not advancing and charging. True. True. How do you feel about that switch? I think I like it, but I don't know that Slanesh... So I think having seven Slanesh units is not actually good um, in terms of projecting threat in a way that having currently three units that can advance and charge is good. Having one is much less good. Do you need more than one unit going yard every turn? It depends. Um, if the battle is seven inches away from you, no. If the battle is kind of standoffish and you're trying to cross the Rubicon into a guard army, absolutely. Yeah, guard is its whole thing, but like legionaries and rhinos do feel pretty good into guard, or at least better than some. Yeah, um, I I think you can get away with the change going slanesh and legionaries, and like chosen rhinos are very explored. We know what they are, and they are they are what they are, but worse. They um, are expensive. They're expensive as hell, and they don't reroll hits, which means that you're not fishing for those sustained. You're not getting nearly as much sustained in there. It also gets us points back, which I love. Yes, <laughs> and I also really don't love having Slanesh or Undivided Legionaries. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at that being like, that cannot be it. Yeah. So you want to say 10 mans or five mans? Just fives, just four fives. Four fives. I, I like having a unit that doesn't have a character that I don't care about that can skirmish and then a, a unit with the character because the character does all the work anyway and you don't even get much better at combat with going from five to ten because you get two heavy melee weapons and a five and you continuously get two heavy melee weapons and ten that is weird yeah I do think with reroll wounds off the legionaries against objectives against objectives but still um and they get real ones to win normally yeah yeah and so I, I would just, yeah, you know, four squads of legionaries. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's swap that. Well, uh, you want to uh, talk about Mazzy yeah, X. Mazzy what? Pax is actually in our Discord server. He and I chat Chaos List along with many other wonderful people in that wonderful Discord server. And he is actually the one who kind of brought Predators of Zinch to my 
uh, attention. They put them on my radar, and then I looked at them. I was like, these are kind of nifty. So thank you, Maz, for coming in. Love and appreciation. And for those of you not in the war room, you're just missing the perks. Just get, in there. <laughs> get that free oh. trial. All right. What do we got left points wise? Okay. So let's see. We're going to have a decent amount yeah, because we're, we're not going to have those chosen. It might even be enough for another rhino full of rhino friends. Or, or maybe we can put Harkin and the Ten Raptors back. I actually still don't hate that unit. I, no grenades makes me, like, brutally sad. Um, I still kind of hate that unit. <laughs> all right. If you hate that unit, we're not putting it in. No bad units. That's my mantra. You don't put bad units in your list. As long as you keep bad units out of your list and you put good units in your list, you are at least got some level of power. But if you trick yourself into putting bad units in... Yeah, then, then, then you're putting bad units. Then you're putting bad units in your list. Speaking of bad units, Jack, what do we think about 3x3 three three bikes? I think they're bad. <sighs> but they might score points. How many points are they? 85 for That 30. is way higher than I was thinking. Yeah, we're I gonna think that's cheap as chips. You get a power fist, you get two melts of guns. I would go Zinch Lethal Fives. They come back to life, OC2, and outflank sometimes. Are you spending a CP on bringing a bike back to life? No, it's... Well, I... When it flips an objective, I am. Okay, fine, <laughs> fine. Um, we have 245 points left. Where do you think our sliders are at? Do you think we have enough damage? Do you think we need more damage? Do you think we need more objective control? Do you think, what do, what do you think we need? You can never go wrong with more damage in CSM. That is true. I, I hate to be that person. That's not who well, I am, but chaos, that's who CSM Chaos bikes don't seem to really... I understand what you're saying. We do have... Just too many points for three units of bike. Just too few bikes. Just too, I, okay, so it's not the bikes. I get it. I get where you're saying. I get where you're coming at. Bikes are cheap. One unit at the end of the day is not the end of the world because you can get it around and do secondaries with it. That is pretty dope. I see the Matrix, Jack. You see the Matrix? What Matrix are you seeing? Oh, there, I see the Matrix. Okay, we're going to... This list is, is going to end up being very similar to a list that I'm going to try soon, but I love that. Um, okay. So you know how we said we need to increase damage, and I also want to increase our, our unit count and just general stuff going on. Around yeah, yeah, love that. Like. Love that. More demons. Specifically, Seleski, 10 demonettes, and a secret chariot. And, the, and this might have to cost us the second unit at least, but I think that's okay. Seleski so unit of Nurglings is 230, and a secret chariot, yeah, it's going to cost us the second unit of Nurglings. But it will slot in pretty neatly. Why do you like that unit, Nikki? Okay, so... I agree that it's good. Why do you like so it? So there's a lot of things going on with what I just said. I added three units. First, the Secret Chariot is... We covered it earlier. It's just an MSU Skirmisher. And this unit... This army still doesn't have good MSU Skirmishers. The second Rhino helps. But, like, having a driver Rhino onto the objective in the open, it's not Nurgle. It's just going to die. And then your guys are getting out. And they're just going to die. Sometimes you get a terrain feature on a ruin where you... Or on an objective where you can put that Rhino. Sometimes you don't. Having a chariot really solves that right off the bat because it can go out and contest an objective, do whatever, hold an objective, require a real response, get your predators to then shoot whatever shot your chariot, get the game going. That's one thing that solves a problem that I think we were missing, and my bikes were going to attempt to be that solution. You would need two units of demon that's in that build. Oh, yeah, rules, rules, rules. Okay, so, so maybe not the maybe chariot. Maybe not the chariot. Damn, I just went on a chariot rant. Okay. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Demonettes and Seleski. Okay, so two things those do. In some, in most games, Seleski will probably deep strike solo in the backfield and go annoy your opponent's out, capture enemy outpost and be a horrible nuisance. And honestly, she's amazing at that. She is very good at that. Yeah. Um, you'd be shocked how far 120 on a 50 mil base that comes back to life can no, get you. Seleski is an asshole. She's got, <laughs> she's got 12 attacks in combat and a flamer and another gun. She's perfect. People did not stop taking her. <laughs> Because she's bad. They yeah. stopped taking her because they didn't want to give up Assassinate. And guess what? We have two characters. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so she's in. And then the 10 Demonettes, one, they unlock her. Two, they are an OC20 unit with Dev Wounds, which I'm, I'm not complaining. We already put 50 in the first list, you know? And then their powers can combine to be this Dev Wound Crit 5's unit that you can rapid ingress and then put in a safe position, then move nine, then pump like 42 attacks at your opponent with critical wound fives, dev wounds on most of it. And it will, it will cause pain. It will cause pain to your opponent in a way that doesn't cost 360 points for four obliterators or undivided chosen lord cost and things like that. It will, it will get the job done effectively. And then, and then... I'm just then, grabbing them from this list. <laughs> You know, I, I see that. that. That part I got. 
And then we have points left because we don't get the secretary. Yeah, we do have 15 <laughs> points left. We can, oh, I, oh, Jack, what have you done? There we go. Oh, the undo button is powerful. Okay. What did you think of that change? I, I like Selesky. I like Selesky. You're basically required at this point to take Selesky plus the 10 demonets as a unit. I was considering it before I had to do it. You were considering it as a unit before you had to do it. That unit goes anywhere near your backfield on a rapid ingress. And that backfield is no longer yours. Yeah, it's um, gone. Or, or you can use it as a more counter hammer anvil rapid ingress. Like, you know, someone puts a big scary thing in your face. Here, take an average of six dev wounds plus more. Yeah, Selesky is very good. I'm a huge fan of Selesky. People were cutting her because they didn't want to give up bring it down no priz. Mm -hmm. Or not Assassinate. no priz, uh, assassinate. She counts down. for both, and that sucks. She counts for both, and she comes back to life and counts for both again. I think giving up four on assassinate is to totally fine, and that's if they kill Selesky twice. Um, so people won't go for it. Bring it down, you have a bunch of vehicles, but there a lot of them are sitting in the back, and then the one that's the, the ones that are gonna be available to your opponent are like the rhinos and Selesky twice. And Selesky only gives up, what, a two on it? Two. So that's not so bad. If you can fit her in without completely just giving your opponent a secondary on a silver platter, I think she's one of the best units in the game at 120. Yeah, she really is. So where does that put us for points when we put Selesky in? There? We have 15 left. 15. That is not much to do about nothing. But what we can do is put the Intoxicating Elixir on a Lord, and that puts him at 110, gives him a 5 of Feeling Pain, causes some Battle Shock text when he shoots or punches you, and makes her list 2,000 on the nose. Legal lists are great. I love legal lists. It was never illegal. Except when I have the chariot. The chariot, it, the chariot never, it never it, entered it never, the list. It never actually happened. Yeah. It was just, it was theoretical chariots, which all, is my all favorite All chariots kind. are theoretical. <laughs> all right. Intoxicating Elixir is exactly 15, so 110. Yep. Uh, there you go. Is there any thought, uh, there are people talking about corn? So corn legionnaires are nice because they get around the fact that you're having melee weapons and you're a demon hammer strength 8 and 9, and sometimes you have to punch vehicles. Lethal 5s are great. What I think is better, though, is making use of reroll wounds and sustain five, specifically for the Legionnaires, and unlocks advance and charge, which is just its own amazingness. Yep. I, I prefer Slanesh on Legionnaires because you're rerolling wounds, so your every hit roll is more valuable as two than as a automatic wound. I think we have one more decision point we can look at, which is basically the three of choices in terms of the third warp town unit and the third predator destructor can combine to become literally anything else for 240. What combines the four? You said the fourth the, the, No, no, the predator destructor, the third one, mm -hmm. and the third warp town unit. So we go instead of three and three, we go two and two, which doesn't really change how the list operates. It's just less of what you have. Is there something you're hankering to fit in this list? Nick? So for 240, are you hanking? You can get two venom crawlers which only give up two points on Bring It Down. Also love to be Zinch for Lethal Fives on their 12 shots. Um, and they are a, a good little skirmisher, so you don't, like, we, we still don't have a good lead unit. So I want to lead with the Venom Crawler, get my opponent to commit a real amount of effort to remove a Venom Crawler. Then I get to shoot their real amount of effort first with my Predator Destructors and my Forge Fiend and whatnot. Okay, and if you ever kill a unit, in a phase, mm -hmm. um, you um, add plus one to attacks to all of their weapons, melee, and then each of their shooting So weapons. they have two guns, then shooting. Their, every profile I have, melee and combat, is six attacks, AP one, and two damage. Whether it's their shooting attack or their combat attack. But they have two guns, so it's really 12 shots. And then, like you said, every time they kill a unit, they'll go up to 777 seven, seven for 14 shots plus seven punches. So I have a question. There's, there's two ways I see to easily get 240 points, right? Five mm -hmm. warp talons and a predator, mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. A Forge Fiend and three Nurglings. I don't think you can run Chaos Space Marines without a Forge Fiend in a singles environment because you will just struggle to kill Terminators and life will be miserable. And with the Forge Fiend, you no longer struggle to kill Terminators. Do you struggle? I mean, the answer might be yes. Do you still struggle to kill Terminators with three Predators with auto cannons at damage three? I don't trust Terminators with Armor of Contempt and Cover at all. Like, not, not even a little. So you want those dev wounds off the Forge Fiend? I want dev wounds, I want blast times three, I want AP three, I want no questions asked when it comes to Terminators. All right. I've okay. had bad experiences with Terminators. What? I would never. You did. What? <laughs> <laughs>
I would never. So I'm not I'm not suggesting that the Venom Crawler change has to be right. It's very side grade in my mind, but I kind of like it. Which direction are you leaning towards? Let's do the Venom Crawler. Let's more do Venom variety. Crawler. You know, if you want to leave the list as it was before, you totally can. Yeah. With 240, you could you could do a lot of things. You could even put a Land Raider in here, make it Mark and Urgle. It doesn't get shy. It pumps out four last cans. It's not bad. What mark are you thinking for the Venom Crawler? I like Zinch. I like just getting lethal. I like lethal fives coming out the wazoo. I want my army to hurt yours. <laughs> <laughs> toughness, that's a thing for other people. I don't want to think about your toughness. Yes. I like this. I think it's quite good. It's got some oomph. It's very diversified. The lords still hit pretty much as hard as before, assuming they're fighting on an objective. The Venom Crawlers and Predator Destructors give you a lot of firepower. That's lethal fives and some sustained fives and AP two and one. Um, the Forge Fiend helps you against the Terminator Armor of Contempt problem because that's what AP2 and 1 in mass will be weak against. Um, you reroll wounds with all of your power for some objectives. Warp Talents give you Skirmish. Celeski attacks the backfield. You can combine her with the 10 Demonettes if you really want to smash something. And in other games, 10 Demonettes can just be an OC20 unit that just moves. Yeah, absolutely. And we have rhinos. And you have rhinos. And we have a $2 super chat from Edward Cole. Thank you so much. I got a second Venom Crawler and I feel vindicated. That's awesome. I believe that's Edward Cote, but, uh, or Cote. Oh, but yeah, reading is yes. still not. It's so time. hard, man. It's, it's a thing. Lexi157, member for 16 months at the War Room Bronze. Thank you, Lexi. Says, was cooking an all Slanesh list with three rhinos, six by five legionaries, three lords. Glad to see it here. Also, thoughts on a corn master of execution plus chosen or legionaries. Uh, nade and go. Oh, I, I do love the corn master of executions. Rerolling hits, lead the lids, join him to chosen and just let the pain go. Um, you could do it with Lord or the master of executions. Oh, Rerolling to hit and lethal fives. Lethal fives, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. like. Just, so, like, if you want to make chaos MSU hit people really hard, you definitely can. Yeah. That is that is a really cool unit, too. Yeah. I, I think that's something worth exploring. Yeah, because you only get the reels to hit against something that's below starting. Y yes. So you grenade them. You grenade them first, yeah. yeah. The the thing that's like not the best is that corn has to go into corn rhino. But you know, whatever. Corn rhino. Corn rhino. Corn. Just take ten legionaries with, with that dude and run in and punch people up. Mm -hmm. Real real mm -hmm. dead. Uh, Master of Execution joins some legionaries is the quickest reroll hits, reroll wounds combo you can access. Yeah, and you know what it'll mess up? Really, really hard. Most things. <laughs> a lot of most things. Yeah, no, that's right. But also Catan. Jack only sees the world in Catan now. I need all Catans <laughs> to be dead because if I have no answer to Catans, Catans are answer to me. I don't like that. So anyway, you can get more of Jack every week on, on Fix My List and it'll te teach you how to kill Catan. Bye. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoy your list, Awers. We'll catch you later. Thank you so much, everybody. Join the war room, subscribe to this channel, and do the thing. All right. Well, I think on that note, we will see you next week. It's going to be Fix My List Xenos. Bye. Bye.